speaking of owning your dream homes, EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms, or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, TV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 32. 59220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Alright. Honey, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer? To buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نتوجه إليك ونستغيث برحمتك وأنت رحم الرحيم اللهم أن تجعل جنبي دولة آمنة مطمئنة بألا داني لما نسك لنك فأسى جنبي تنك Alam ala Gambia tanka, alam ala tanka Pitinola, alam ala tanka Jarawola, alam ala tanka Jampala. Masilan ko nono be alam ala tanka. Wal be dunia dawoda alam ala ya wulikan, amam foto deming alkana foto ndiji. Alibina feo pen ka chala nyimbe ngoto, alam ala barako keje. Alam ala 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 al samanta bengola, alam ala al sokairo. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. أبارك الله فيك أنا توري. أنا أحب أن أقول بشوب أديكو من الأمم المتحدة الأمريكية لكي يساعدنا في الدعاء في الدعاء في الدعاء. الرحمن الرحيم والرحمن الرحيم 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 Throughout the whole world in your image and in your likeness. And you who have placed each and every human being into nations. We thank you for this nation, the Gambia. And we continue to thank you for the leadership of this nation, the Gambia, in the passing of Adama Ubara and uh, his cabinet and his entire government. And we also submit and thank you for all the 
different businesses, the NGOs, and all other sectors of work in this nation. Today, as this nation launched the national security sector reform strategies, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be in this program, will be with the government, will be with the ministry and those that are responsible to see to it that this national security strategy and the security sector reform strategy take its rightful place in this nation. We know that in you we have peace, in you we have security, and so we pray that your hand will be over this land so that this nation will be an example of peace, of security, of patience, of love, of care, and sharing. We continue to ask that you will bless all who are attending this meeting today, and more so, bless those who will be in charge of this program <coughs> and this security sector reform throughout this land and grant that this nation will be ever secured. There will be peace and tranquility at all times in this land. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, it is an honor, no less a privilege, to invite you to this conference, uh, the Sadauda Karaba Jawara International Conference Center, uh, a center whose name also bears has some very profound echoes of history. Uh, it was Sadauda Karaba Jawara who led the Gambia to independence through a very bloodless, peaceful transition. He was a very peaceful, extraordinary, somewhat human being a humanist, a democrat by all standards, an international icon whose, whose character and legacy reflects many things Gambian. And it is in recognition of Sadauda's, you know, laudable democratic uh, legacy that this conference was named after him. Uh, today, as we gather here to chart yet again another milestone in Gambian history, I think it is, it is important that uh, everybody here recognizes Sir Dauda's immense and invaluable contribution towards the development of the Gambia and the Gambian people. Uh, ironically, as has always been the case in history, the very armed forces he created at independence, particularly after the 81 coup, ended up toppling his own government. We are gathered here to make sure that in this new dispensation, coup and coup d'etats would be anathema to Gambian history and the, the, the documents that are about to be learned today would be a testimony to that. Two, two, two significant uh, documents, security documents, uh, are going to be launched here today. Uh, before, before, uh, without much ado, I would uh, uh, just proceed with the program proper. Uh, we're going to have uh, the National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Momo Rubaji, to uh, give the opening remarks and then thereafter we will be having a statement by the United Nations Resident Coordinator and then there will be a presentation of certificates uh, by a woman participant and that would be a statement by the Chairman of the Security Sector Reform who happens to be the Honorable Minister of Justice and then that would be a group photograph and then that would be a lunch for invited guests. So, National Security Advisor, Mr. Bali. Good morning, <clears throat> Honorable Attorney General, Minister of Justice, and Chairman 
of the Security Sector Reform Steering Committee, Honorable and Excellency members of the Security Sector Steering Committee, Honorable Ministers, the Honorable Secretary General and Head of Civil Service, the Honorable Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and Chairman of the Standing Committee on Defense and Security, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and members of the diplomatic community, heads of defense and security services, former heads of defense and security services present here, honorable governors and chairpersons of area councils, permanent secretaries, members of the international advisory group on security sector reform process, heads of parastatals and other departments, members of the media fraternity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols respectfully observed. It gives me a great pleasure today to extend a warm welcome to you all, and I am pleased with this opportunity to address you here because security sector reform is crucial to making development efforts effective, in particular in our own context, context having come from an authoritarian I mean, regime and forging ahead for reconstruction. As it is commonly known that there cannot be sustainable development without stable, effective, and democratically accountable security institutions. Therefore, as part of his commitment in attaining socioeconomic development in the Gambia, His Excellency Mr. Adama Barrow, President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces, took four steps in launching the security sector reform process in 2017, and subsequently the national security policy in May 2019 all with a view to ensure he laid a very solid foundation for his national development ambitions, programs, and projects. As part of his continued commitment, we are gathered here to witness the official launching of the National Security Strategy and the security sector reform strategy documents. The national security strategy is intended to serve as the overarching national strategy document in framing Gambia's pursuit for our national security. Ladies and gentlemen, national security is a dynamic and multifaceted issue that requires solid but yet a very flexible approach. The strategic documents we are launching today specifies all our national interests that must be protected as well as how these interests are currently under threat and furthermore how we endeavor collectively to see how we can minimize the risk and the threats to our country. Our national security sector presents a guiding principle. Sorry, the national security strategy document presents a guiding principle of Gambia's security and its interests and objective. 
It demonstrates the security environment surrounding the Gambia and the challenges to our national security and equally presents the strategic approaches that we should take individually and collectively as a nation to preempt, protect, prevent, and defend against all challenges, natural and man-made disasters. The strategy, ladies and gentlemen, will also enhance our prevention and protection and response capabilities to security threats in a, an increasingly complex environment. This National Security Strategy 2020 to 2024 has been designed through vigorous consultations with all relevant stakeholders in a participatory manner to preserve Gambia's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and also promote and protect our national interests as, and ensure that the well-being of all the inhabitants of the Gambia are taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you an overview of the national security strategy, which is structurally divided into thematic basis, five for that matter. Starting with chapter one, which comprises of the national security framework our national aspirations, our values, goals, and the national security. The national security interest and environment is also taken care of in the same chapter. It also looks at the global security trend, the current security situation in the Gambia, and key national challenges and effective use of instruments of our national power. In chapter two, we looked at the national action plan, which is divided into five pillars as follows. Ladies and gentlemen, pillar one is the protection of our national sovereignty and territorial integrity. Whilst pillar two looks at or captures the good governance, respect for human rights, and rule of law. In chapter three, you will find cooperation and collaboration among the security forces. And chapter four deals with our nationalism, our positive image, and prestige that we need as Gambians. And finally, in the last pillar, which is chapter five, we covered the socioeconomic development. And then chapter three of the secure national security architecture, which includes, and which is, I mean, at the drafting level, that is the National Security Council, the Office of the National Security, National Joint Operations Committee, National Joint Intelligence Committee, and the Joint Operations Committee. The sectorial strategies will include national defense policy, the military strategy, and the internal security strategy, respectively, border management strategy, counter-terrorism strategy, cyber security, and information and communication technology strategy, which will culminate with sensor strategy. In chapter four, which is civilian oversight and democratic control, is an important pillar in, in a school of thought in security sector reform. We will equally look at how we can ably res uh, mobilize resources to be able to forge ahead with our security sector reform and also key 
is monitoring and evaluation process. Ladies and gentlemen, in a less significant departure from the national security strategy, the security sector reform strategy focuses on human security centered approach which with an aim of restructuring the sector to achieve an effective, robust, professional, apolitical, accountable, transparent and responsive sector to the needs and the aspirations of our people. The strategy is divided into priority areas, starting with an attempt to restore public trust and confidence by addressing post-authoritarian legacies. It will also look at the development of an overarching security framework to be able to guide the operations of our security sector. The reform, empowerment, and strengthening civilian management and oversight is also key in this strategy. We will also, we are also, we have also taken care of specific issues to address institutional reform activities. Finally, in the priority areas or the thematic areas, ladies and gentlemen, we looked into the addressing the cross-cutting perennial uh, challenges with a focus on gender, youth, and disadvantaged people. It is pertinent to inform you that this particular team, gender equality, promotion, advancement of women in security sector has been given its requisite priority and it is currently leading in terms of implementation efforts. I think I would refer you at the back there on the board. I think you can all see for yourself security sector reform, gender caravan. This is one of the activities which will be taken. I think it is scheduled for 27th. So it's a clear demonstration and indication that the security sector is serious and the government is committed in gender equality and gender parity. The strategies is also designed with overall objectives, missions and visions to guide the security sector. And finally, the pri priority areas have all got their objectives the outcomes, inputs, and respective, I mean, activities. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to mention the need for a growing effort to maintain the momentum in our search for peace and security, which offer an opportunity for a renewed emphasis on security sector reform support as a blocking, sorry, building block for our sustainable peace. I would like to reaffirm the high level commitment and dedication being demonstrated by His Excellency the President, his government, members of the Security Sector Reform Steering Committee towards the successful implementation of the security sector reform in the Gambia. What we have achieved so far in developing these two important strategic documents and where we have come so far, ladies and gentlemen, is just a first step in our team work and team spirit. After we close, launching, after we close this launching ceremony, let us all bear in mind that this is only the beginning of a challenging and more exciting journey. 
a bigger world awaits all of us. The world is implementation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about implementation, we mean a strong institutional collaboration, cooperation, and coordination among all stakeholders, that is state actors and non-state actors alike, and our infatigable security sector reform partners. We will continue to welcome your gen generous support and assistance in whatever way possible. I encourage all of you to leave this launching ceremony with an understanding of the importance of our individual, personal, institutional contributions to making the Gambia peaceful, safe, stable, and a wonderful country. I would like to express appreciation for all the invaluable logistic support provided by the government and the security sector reform partners in the preparations of this launching ceremony and we look forward to a productive, successful and continued partnership with all of you. While I cannot mention each one by name here, I hope that you will all take it as a personal thank you for your unflinching support and being here today. God bless our launching ceremony. God bless you all. God bless our great country, the Gambia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Badi, Lieutenant Colonel Mudubadi, that is the chairperson, the, the advisor to the president on national security. Um, in, in, in proceeding, let me just also recognize the presence uh, of the Secretary General at the Office of the President, uh, Honorable Noha Toure. Uh, Mr. Toure is seated next to the uh, Minister of Justice. Um, we also have uh, his deputy, uh, Madam Salima Tutore, uh, the deputy secretary general at the office of the president. Uh, this all goes to confirm the national security advisor's uh, statement that President Barrow takes this uh, program very seriously and wants a very successful reform in both the structure and the programming of our national security apparatus. Um, Mr. Baji actually in his uh, synoptic speech also outlined uh, the numerous hurdles uh, thus far traversed and the many, many more hurdles we have to overcome to arrive at the uh, final destination of this uh, program. Um, the inclusion of women, uh, the gender dimension of this reform also makes it very significant that uh, who knows one day we may have a national army commander the commander in chief of the army who, who is a woman this is all possible in this society for many many years men have been dominating and domineering every sector and facet of gambian society so now at least it's good that uh, we are also aware of the significance of having our own mothers and sisters at the very helm of society that's a very profound uh, development. Uh, may I now take the opportunity to call on the resident coordinator of the United Nations Systems in the Gambia. Uh, the National Security Advisor told me that she actually is going to uh, speak on behalf of the other diplomats uh, so that uh, her statement reflects and represents the totality of the views of the diplomats gathered here. Thank you and welcome, Madam. Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Honorable Ministers, Diplomatic Corps, and other personality here present, Honorable Secretary General and Head of Civil Service, UN colleagues, members of the International Security Sector Advisors Group, the media, 
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully observed. I have the singular honor and pleasure this morning to give a statement on behalf of the UN family in the Gambia and the International Security Sector Reform Partners on this auspicious occasion of the launching of the two strategy documents on security sector reform in the Gambia, namely the National Security Strategy and the Security Sector Reform Strategy. As you will recall, in July 2019, we gathered in a similar forum to launch the drafting process for these two documents in order to support the government of the Gambia in the implementation of the national security policy launched in June 2019 and the recommendations of, from the Security Sector Reform Assessment Report released in 2017. Here we are today, a year later. We are blessed with the opportunity to officially launch these two documents to boost efforts on implementation. I'm delighted that we are furthering our efforts in addressing the major overarching SSR framework gaps in order to smoothly execute the reform process. From a global dimension, the United Nations commitment to 2030 agenda and sustaining peace makes clear that in our effort, in, the, in our reform efforts, we should support security systems which are people focused, right sized, and accountable. SSR can be instrumental to achieving target 16.1 of the agenda 2030 to prevent and reduce violence in all its forms and to enable people to experience safety and security. <laughs> From the regional perspective, the cross-border challenges requires a collaborative approach that reduces incidences of armed conflicts, increases secu security, enhances social cohesion and builds resilience across the region as a whole. While regional cooperative approaches tend to create a more conducive environment for the implementation of the SSR, ongoing regional conflicts tend to weaken them. The relevance of the regional dimension of SSR is clearly illustrated by developments in sub-regions such as the Sahel and the West Africa. Such or in, and such sub-regional organizations, we have the AU, the G5 Sahel, and the ECOWAS, they have assumed increasingly active role in shaping the SSR agenda. And what we see in the Gambia is a typical example. This will also strengthen our resolve to continue further assistance to the reform process. We will particularly welcome a renewed commitment to the ownership and leadership of the process as declared by His Excellency the President when he met the visiting UN Technical Assessment Team exactly a year ago in 2019. It would also be interesting to see how to on the ongoing discussions and projections on the scope, size, and mandate of the security sector aligns with the Gambian context, including on the thematic areas identified in the SSR comprehensive assessment exercise that was held in 2017. We thank the leadership of the Gambia for the courage and commitment to forge ahead despite observed delays in administrative bottlenecks. The SSR journey may be long, but it is worthwhile to ensure that the reform processes integrate human rights principles and standards and are comprehensive, simple, 
implementable, affordable, and surely sustainable. These buzzwords may sound ambitious as we keep repeating them, but they are indeed relevant toward ensuring that the security sector reform, accountability, and good governance frameworks are adhered to. Mr. Chairperson and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while at least we recognize that in some instances, inevitable delays to occur in SSR processes, given their both technical and political imperatives, we encourage all stakeholders, especially national actors, to stay engaged in the process to achieve desired results. As we look forward to a fruitful implementation of these two key strategies, the UN and its international partners would like to encourage a meaningful and inclusive collaboration across the security sector with other ongoing reform processes, including a strengthening the rule of law, human rights, and on transitional justice. It would be equal useful to elaborate national plans for enhanced gender equality and equity, while strengthening a gender responsive security sector reform. These areas have been clearly elaborated in the strategy as have been already presented to you. And we really hope that the implementation will be a reality. The UN and its partners recognizes the enormous effort that went into drafting these two key documents. I would like to thank the International Advisors Group that provided the guidance and technical expertise to support the drafting process. In conclusion, the UN family in the Gambia would like to once again thank the various drafters who took time to really draft those two documents that are going to be references in the implementation of the security sector reform. We hope that in the coming days, the security institutions, civil society, the staff of the Office of National Security and other stakeholders who have been supporting these processes will also be included during the implementation time. I would equally like to acknowledge the UN Peace Building Fund for the support provided for the drafting of the two strategies. And also our sister agency, UNDP, for supporting this launching ceremony together with International Advisors Group and all our partners. With this, I wish a successful implementation of the SSR strategies and wish to commend the government for all the efforts done so far and again reiterate the commitment of the UN with its partners that we are going to continue supporting the Gambia in the implementation of these strategies. I thank you all for your kind attention and God bless the Gambia. Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Resident Coordinator, for your, your wise words of counsel. Um, the, the, the speech you gave um, echoes some very significant uh, pointers uh, as the Gambia uh, moves on for a better governance system. Uh, the rule of law, for instance, uh, due process, constitutionalism, human rights, respect for human rights, people's rights. These uh, were the major casualties of the old dispensation. 
So therefore, uh, as we come up with new strategies and documents, uh, it is important we recognize that they are captured and they form the bedrock and the synthesis of all that we, we want to achieve in this country. And we, we thank you and your various colleagues and partners on whose behalf you spoke for your continuous support of the Gambia and the Gambian people towards the realization of this dream. Thank you. Uh, I now have the pleasure to invite uh, Mr. Baji to co coordinate uh, uh, this uh, presentation of certificates, National Security Advisor. Thank you so much for uh, that uh, fantastic presentation of uh, certificates of recognition. I now have the honor to call on the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Dauda Jalo, uh, in his capacity as chairperson of the SSR, SC, and uh, launching of the strategy. Colleague, Cabinet Ministers, Secretary General and Head of Civil Service, UN Resident Coordinator, UNDP resident representative, ECOWAS special representative to the Gambia, EU special representative to the Gambia, members of the diplomatic and consular corps, the national security advisor of South the national security, DCAF country representative, international advisory group members attached to the office of national security, members of the drafting and editorial team, of the national national security strategy and national security uh, strategy, reform strategy, members of the press, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm greatly honoured and privileged to preside over the official launching ceremony of the national security strategy and security sector reform strategy documents on behalf of the President of the Republic of the Gambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and Chairperson of the National Security Council, His Excellency Adam Abaro. 
This ceremony follows the launching of the national security policy by His Excellency the President on the 10th of June 2019. The launching of these two strategic documents is yet another milestone in the trajectory of events in developing the security architecture of our country. It could be recalled that shortly after His Excellency President Adam Abaro took over the political leadership of this country in 2017, a technical working group was duly commissioned to conduct comprehensive security sector reform assessment to ascertain the gaps and malfunctions of the security sector that his government inherited. This assessment was completed in December 2017 and the report came up with recommendations that would enable the sector to, trans to be transformed to meet the needs of the state and the people's aspirations. The report made several findings relating to deficits and malfunctions of the security sector that needs urgent redress. It further recommends the need for a national security policy and a civilian controlled security sector based on democratic principles, institutions, and institutions, respect for human rights and rule of law. While the SSR assessment reports shall act as foundation for the security sector reform strategy, the national security policy will serve as the main reference for the national security strategy. The launching of the NSS and the SSR strategy today is yet another demonstration of the government's unflinching commitment and priority to the transformation and development of security sector of the Gambia. There are several advantages of having the national security strategy as well as the security sector reform strategy, which includes to guide the implementation of national security policy, to build public confidence in the security sector as, as defenders of the citizens' rights, to enhance regional and international confidence in cooperation, to establish clear path for the implementation of the security sector reform agenda, and to mobilize funds for the implementation strategies. In this realm, the formulation of NSS and SSR strategies as primary framework documents for the government and security services is another manifestation of government's commitment in ensuring that national security is preserved and sustained. Consequently, the recognition, support, and cooperation of Gambians, including members of the security services, are vital in ensuring the independence, safety, and sovereignty of the country based on the principles of democracy, good governance, and respect for the rule of law. As we live in an increasingly interconnected, complex, and dangerous world, national security matters have become increasingly complex and multifaceted. Accordingly, the politics of national security can be characterized as integration of its security, foreign and diplomatic policies to coordinate its political, economic, and psychosocial and security potentials to guarantee against actual or potential external or internal threats, as well as the achievements and preservations of its core values and essential national objectives. In the same vein, the new security paradigm shift that, that highlights the human-centric human focus, as well as the nexus between the security and development, has given rise to the whole new myriad of security challenges. This has necessitated a holistic approach to national security based on a system evaluations which allows individuals, agencies, and departments to take a much broader perspective than normal. Such challenges include issues of human rights, economics, and the environment, drug trafficking, epidemics, and or social justice, in addition to the traditional concern of external and internal security threats, such as terrorism and violent extremism. It is hoped that the NSS and SSR strategies which clearly outlines the security architecture that the government of the Gambia is building will foster national unity, reconciliation, and peace. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the government shall ensure full civil oversight and democratic control of the security sector in line with international standards. Furthermore, the objective is to build a security sector that has high respect for human rights and gender mainstreaming issues in all aspects, including re-engineering 
of the security institutions to ensure the integrity and legitimacy of the security system. In this regard, we shall aim for effective governance, oversight and accountability of the security services, improved service delivery, ownership of reform process based on the needs and aspirations of the Gambian people. As a country with a legacy of human rights abuses, the government is acutely aware of the need for, a trans for transformation and development of the security sector with the fervent belief of the contribution that the sector could make in the process of state building, democratization, and peace building. I wish to, make this I wish to take this opportunity to reiterate the government's full and unwavering commitment to the implementation of the security sector reform. Since the launch of the security sector reform program in 2017, a lot of gains have taken place. These are mostly in training, gender mainstreaming, and an audit of personnel in the security services, vetting, and counterterrorism. The gallant role of the security services in the COVID-19 pandemic response is highly commendable. Cabinet has approved the vetting bill, which will be tabled before the National Assembly in the near future. Work is also in progress on the statutory empowerment of the Office of the National Security to effectively spearhead the reforms as well as serve as the Secretariat of the National Defense Council. I am not oblivious of the perception in some quarters that the, the pace of security reform is slow. This, I believe, is persistent because most of the initiative and reforms are not effectively communicated to the general public. People have a right to know about issues governing their security. I will therefore implore on the Office of the National Security to improve on its publicity campaigns and interactions with civil society to keep them abreast of all important steps that are being taken in the SSR process. May I also urge all Gambians to be patient as SSR is complex and delicate process and therefore cannot be done in a rush. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, security sector reform, as you may be aware, also requires a lot of resources and expertise. I would therefore appeal to our development partners to continue supporting the, the implementation of these strategies in making it a success. I would also like to seize this opportunity to express gratitude to the entire UN system DICA for sponsoring the launching ceremony, ECOWAS for supporting the drafting of NSS and SS, SSR strategies. Sincere appreciation also is conveyed to the EU, the African Union, and all the other partners for their contributions and coordination efforts. Debts of gratitude are also owed to the excellent support, uh, support team of the International Advisory Group and staff of the Office of the National Security for their dedication in ensuring that the two strategies are developed despite the challenges they are faced with. Finally, on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and Chairperson of the National Security Council, Mr. Adam Abaro, it is my pleasure to officially launch the National Security Strategy and the Security Sector Reform Strategy documents. God bless the Gambia. God bless all of you. Thank you. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. 
quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. I got it. Okay, million, Albaga. Albaga, important. Yeah, not transfer. Yeah, transfer. Have code Okay. What's that? Until I did sort of. Ah, Sorry. I got it. Million, Albaga. Albaga. But Allah service Ah, but kunu marakaria. Ah, jangno miwana forest de biro. Gambia tonko na lumbaria biro. Ha. Very important for cattle. But it's a good thing for cattle. For both of them. 56 branches more than the Gambia. Huh? Ha. Gambia is not a big deal. It's 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 not Boy, Janno Circus Restaurant. Yes, I know who will be in the Dimbal. Number Domoro Karajano. Domoro Senata, Adiata, Topotoro, and Kendama Bije. Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani, Adimanda Wallade, Takawe Vijele, and Impanan Kafa Dijan, Ukono Fa. A Kafamina called Pestry and in Bakery, Ukofan and Bakari. Bad day lomba, conference lomba, workshop lomba, ye four ten nil lomba, dunia kono. Domoro better ma, nil lomba international hotel wada, number one. Amanke ba domola jang dama. Esa domo jang, is atari ya. Ah, wamu kubandi. Ha, sani na kubandi. Sani na kubandi. Eh, oto sani na kubandi mu CKS restaurant. Ndaba na jang na mu yad, ni manje jorombi jang. Aban. CKS restaurant, known for best quality food and customer satisfaction. Music.